Well, somebody that is ready for God to bless you, anoint you, and use you for His glory. I want you to give the Lord a great hand clap of praise for day five of the Morris Cirillo Proof Producers School of Ministry. The beautiful Jerry Morrow is in the house. Honey, we are standing in the Morris Cirillo Legacy Pavilion Theater. These are the kinds of platforms that Brother Cirillo stood on for over seven decades. And this message is really the heartbeat of Morris Cirillo. Amen, and it is a powerful message. And you are not here by accident. I always say that, but it's so true. And it's just such a reminder. God has called you. He's chosen you. He has anointed you. And you're going to learn the keys today, the keys of the kingdom. You know, honey, so many times ministers, they don't intend to do this, but they communicate the message that there is some kind of a difference between the platform that they stand on and maybe the pew that we sit in. And what I love about Brother Trillo, for over seven decades, his message was, look, the future success of the kingdom of God is not standing behind a pulpit, but it's in the hands of the man or the woman. And I want you to know something. I don't understand why God does this, but it always seems like he chooses who he chooses and doesn't choose sometimes who we would think he would choose. Samuel went into Jesse's house in Bethlehem looking for the next king of Israel. And they brought the tall, handsome, number one son out and number two and number three and four, five, six, seven. And the Spirit of God said to Samuel, I don't look at the outward appearance like you do. I look at the heart. The next king is not in this room. And Samuel said to Jesse, do you have another son? And he said, yeah, I have my youngest boy, number eight, David, out in the shepherd's field. And Samuel said, we're not gonna sit down until you bring him in. I want you to know something right now. You didn't choose God. This is what Brother Cirillo is telling us. This is what he's told us over and over again. But God chose you. Somebody say, God is blessing me, God is anointing me, and God is using me for his glory. And so Brother Cirillo's message is this, that every believer is a full-time minister. And that's really where your blessed place is. Your blessed place is not in the belly of the whale like Jonah. Your blessed place is in the place of surrender. It's in the place of God, anoint me. God, yes, use me. Here I am like Isaiah. So honey, today's message is powerful. We're gonna go into it in just a moment. One of the greatest illustrations that I have seen Brother Cirillo bring in all of his ministry, it's the illustration of what it really means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. Well, you stay tuned. You're going to receive a revelation today, the baptism, the real baptism of the Holy Spirit. So here we go. We're gonna go right in right now, but I want you to use the share button. I want you to go ahead and tag somebody, invite somebody that wants God to use their life in a greater way. We can't wait to connect with you today as we connect with God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. I want you to say this together with me. Say this. You and I live in a natural world. But we also live in another world. Some people look at me sort of peculiar like when I tell them that man has two sets of ears. Usually when I tell them that, they start doing this. 
They start trying to fiddle it. They said, maybe Brother Stroh sees something up there that I don't see. But man has two sets of ears. He has these natural ears, and that's fine. And we're going to get a breakthrough in this school of ministry in several realms. And one of them is going to be faith. You're going to walk out of this school. You're going to understand. You're never going to be confused. You will never question again as long as you live. I don't care who preaches what. Now, you got that peculiar look on your face. See, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so people think if they just speak the word, that that produces it. We're going to find out what the depth of that really means. You see, because man's got two sets of ears and you don't receive faith and neither do you hear with your natural ears. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God saith unto the church. God's not talking about what you hear with these natural ears. He's talking about what you hear with your spiritual ears. But man lives in two worlds. He lives in a natural world and he lives in a spiritual world. Now, I wish it was reversed, but it isn't. Until something happens. Over here in the natural world, the natural man is making tremendous, phenomenal, what I call breakthroughs. Tremendous breakthroughs in the natural world. Now, what do I mean by a breakthrough? A breakthrough is a sudden burst of advanced knowledge that takes you past through a line of defense. Now, in the past 75 years, we have made more breakthroughs in this natural world than in all of history put together. More inventions, more discoveries in every aspect of every field of the natural world. Science, medicine, technology, computerization, outer space. Just think, you can sit at a little console, nothing more than what looks like a typewriter, push a few buttons, put in a few codes, and that will actually activate a rocket sitting on a launching pad and boom, send it to the moon. Woo-hoo. Come on, are you out there? What is that, Brother Sir? That's a breakthrough in the natural world. Now, why couldn't we send a rocket to the moon a thousand years ago? Somebody said people are smarter today than they were 2,000 years ago. 
I don't know how to interpret that kind of saying. I think we've got the same brain up here that was in Adam. If in the last 75 years, what kind of breakthroughs have we got? Electricity? Running water? Washroom facilities? Come on! Automobiles? Airplanes? Rockets? Refrigerators? Washing machines? All within the last 75 years! You say to me, Brother Sulu, what's happening? I'll tell you what's happening, brother. Jesus is coming. Yes. Don't look at Brother Sula with that look. This is it, brother. Come on, this is the real thing. This is no fire drill. Jesus is coming. We're making such unbelievable discoveries in the natural world. Bursts of knowledge where there was a wall of defense that held back the discoveries. Now, we're breaking through those walls. Daniel prophesied this would happen. He said in the last days, he said man's knowledge would increase. Same brain. Same brain. He's just getting breakthroughs, brother, to go into areas where his mind never was before. Breakthroughs. Say it with me, all truth is parallel. All truth is parallel. Say it again. All truth is parallel. I want to ask you a question. If all truth is parallel, and this is happening over here in the natural world, and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is drawing nigh, you answer me. What do you think before God is going to happen in the spirit world to his people? Ephesians 1, 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, ye shall know the... What is truth? What is the personality of truth? Jesus. Say it. Jesus. Say it. Jesus. Say it. Jesus. What is the result of truth? Power. Which he hath purposed in himself. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, what is a breakthrough? It's a sudden burst of advanced knowledge that takes us past a line of defense. It gives us a breakthrough. There's no place in the Bible, no place in the Word of God where you can ever find where Jesus is teaching you and I to hold the fort. What he is teaching you and I to do is to break through the lines of Satan's defense. For a long time, in the hearts of God's people, there has been a wall, a line of defense. We have not been able to get a breakthrough in. 
to get an understanding that would open up for us the manifestation. Now hear what I said. The manifestation, not the theory, not the doctrine, not the word, but the manifestation of power. We have had, and I'm grateful to God, in the past 50 years, a breakthrough in what we call the charismatic circles. If I were to ask the different denominations of people that are in this auditorium this morning, you would be surprised. We got Catholics here, Catholic priests. We have all kinds of denominational ministers. Got Baptists here, Methodists. We even got a few hard-shelled Pentecostals. No, oh, I didn't mean that. You know, those people who've been in the way a long time. <clears throat> Thank God they're learning how to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit <laughs> do it. And in this great outpouring of God amongst different denominations, more than ever before, the church of Jesus Christ has had its attention drawn to a spiritual phenomena in the word of God called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I have watched this phenomenon take place. Now remember, so that we can keep our mind and our spirit in perspective, something is happening here, here. Why? Because Jesus is coming. The purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is to bring unity. Now, I'm not asking you all to belong to one earthly denomination, but I am asking us all to belong to one heavenly body that makes us forget our earthly denomination. You want to belong to it? Go ahead and belong to it. But don't be married to it. Be married to the body of Christ. Christians have probably sent more people to hell than any other force because of our disunity. That's why the Bible says when we get to heaven, brother, judgment is going to begin at the house of God. Can't start anyplace else. But how many of you know I don't want you to come here to the school of ministry without having the experience? Never mind just filling your head with a lot of things. God, we've got to get the things out and we've got to take us into that breakthrough, brother, where we go past the line of defense and we get the experience. In this experience of what the charismatics is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have emphasized one thing. I don't have a place to write it all out here. I'll just put this, this T up here. And it stands for tongues. We have emphasized the experience of tongues. Say it. Tongues. Say it again. Tongues. Now you say to me, Brother Sulu, don't you believe in speaking in other tongues? Well, if you've been 
hearing all morning long, you know Brother Shula believes in speaking in other tongues. Because I've been talking to the Father in between talking to you. I'm talking to the Father. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the Father. The Bible says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what? He doesn't speak unto man. He speaks who? God. To who? God. To who? God. To who? God. Now you watch people who are trying to receive what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've been taught that when we receive the experience of tongues, that we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what we've been taught. And we teach all of these people coming into the denominations who want to get the baptism, we teach them, well, you've got to seek the Lord until you get a breakthrough to where you speak in other tongues. And then when that breakthrough of other tongues comes, you got it. You got the baptism. Now, do you? You say, well, Brother Sewell, I've been taught that all my life. I know you have. In fact, I was one of them who taught it. Did you hear me? I was one of them for years who taught it. Until one day, God gave to me a breakthrough in P-O-W-E-R. And I was able to understand through revelation, through an advanced burst of knowledge, spiritual knowledge, I was able to understand for the first time in my life what the baptism of the Holy Spirit really is. I'm telling you, brother, the time has come. we got to have something more, something more, something more. Now, if you don't believe it, just take a good look at what you got. Somebody told me that we've seen everything that God is going to do in this world. Brother, let me tell you something. If this church and if you and I have seen everything that God's going to do in this world, I've got news for you, brother. We're in big trouble. If God isn't going to break upon this world with a new wave, with his divine glory, with his Shekinah, with his new manifestation, with the revelation of his son Jesus in a way that we have never seen before, if God doesn't do that, this whole world is lost. When every child of God or every person, every individual is born again, when they're born again, they receive the Spirit of God. Every person. Is. You cannot be born again without the Spirit of God. Why? Because when Christ is put in your heart, the Bible says that God gives you the Spirit of His Son. He can't give you the Spirit of His Son whereby you cry, Abba, Father, without giving you the Spirit because the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one as well as three in one. Now, somebody said to me, Brother Swillow, can somebody be partially filled with the Holy Spirit? Listen to me. I have a glass here in my hands. I want you to pretend. I want you to imagine that this glass is your life. It's a vessel. Say it, a vessel. Yes. Look up here. A vessel. Say it again. Yes. This is my life. Now, I'm born again. When I'm born again, I'm born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is in me. Now, when I'm born again, I'm a little child. When your little child is born, you don't take the keys of your automobile and give it to them and say, go drive it down the street. That'd be foolishness. 
You don't take your checkbook and give it to the hands of a teenager. <laughs> you seem to know what I'm talking about from experience. You don't do that, do you? Why don't you do that? Because you know they're not wise. They don't understand how to use a checkbook or they haven't come into the experience or the understanding of the value of a dollar. Why they haven't worked for it yet and they haven't had to go out and sweat to produce it. And when that happens, then they come into the understanding of what the value of it is. So there's a maturity that has to go on. Let's say that this water that I have here in this picture represents the Holy Spirit. Now the question is, can a vessel be partially filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes, you get saved, you're born again by the Spirit of God. You got that much. You're born again. Christ is in your heart. As you begin to read the Word of God, as you begin to walk in the Spirit, as God begins to deal with your life, He does what? You are like putty in the hands of the Maker. You're clay. He shapes you. He molds you. What happens? You get a little bit more. You get a little bit more. You get some break. You yield your life. There are things in the areas of your life that are displeasing to God as you begin to lay them on the altar, as you begin to surrender them to God. What happens? As those things go that are carnal in your life, they're, they're replaced by the manifestation of the Spirit. The more you yield, the more you dedicate, the more you give of your life, the more you get. The more you get, the more you get, the more you get, the more you get, the more you get. There are nine gifts of the Spirit. Somewhere from here when you were born again up to here, brother, you broke through and you got the gift of tongues. And now you're a tongue talker. <laughs> I say that spiritually. You can speak in other tongues. Then maybe somewhere in here God uses you in the gift of healing. And you know how because God manifested his healing for you. Then maybe somewhere in here he starts to use you in the gift of giving messages in other tongues. Or interpreting those tongues. Or prophesying. Now all of that can happen and your life still not be filled. How many of you know this glass is not filled? All right. Now you keep getting breakthroughs in the spirit world. You come to a school of ministry. Woo! Bless God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> what happens, brother? I'll tell you what happens. All of a sudden, you're filled. Now, Brother Srilo, can a vessel be filled with the Spirit and not baptized? Now, there's where people don't have the spiritual breakthrough and they don't have the understanding and they can't be brought into the experience. You see, a vessel can be filled, literally filled, even filled with the Spirit, but not be baptized. You say, how do you know, Brother Sol? Because this vessel is filled, but it's not baptized. You say, what's the difference? I'll show you what the difference is, brother. This vessel is filled, but now watch it. Now. Now. Come on. Now. Now. Look, now. That vessel is what? It's what? 
it's what? It's what? How do you know? Come on. How do you know? I tell you how you know, because now that vessel is not filled, brother, and it's not just overflowing, but now it is submerged in God to such an extent that it has the spirit without measure. You can't measure it anymore, brother. Now, what did Jesus say? Go into the upper room when he sent his disciples and stay up there until you get one goosebump on top of another? Until you speak with other tongues? They didn't even know they were going to receive tongues. I don't think you heard what I just said. No, you didn't hear. We've had our eyes and our mind and our attention on tongues, 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 tongues. They had no idea that that tongue manifestation would ever come. That was like God giving them a little icing on the cake. But you know what Jesus did promise them? He said, you get up there in the upper room and don't you leave until you're baptized. John prophesied and he promised you that there's one coming after him who is mightier than he, whose shoes he's not unworthy and the worthy to unlatch and that person is going to do what? He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire! And you're going to do what, brother? You're going to just speak in other tongues? Get one goosebump on top of another? Jump and dance and jiggle? No! Ye shall what? Receive P-O-W-E-R power! Well, somebody that's having a breakthrough to the baptism of power, somebody just go ahead and say, I shall receive power. You can even use the comment section and just put the word power. Honey, one of the things I love about Brother Cirillo is the passion that he has to connect believers in the most direct way to the source of the true power of God. Amen, amen, and really to receive, not just speaking in tongues, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And I love what Dr. Cirillo says. He says, the church of Jesus Christ, which is you and me, mm. we're going to be raptured in even greater power, greater power than the tremendous outpouring uh, of God's spirit in which the church was born. What a powerful statement. You know, honey, that's really what he said all of his life. And that's why this place was built. The prophecy, a powerful spiritual force yes. is about to be released within the body of Christ that will bring about, <laughs> I mean, the greatest manifestation. The Bible says the glory of the latter house. I don't know how God is going to do it, but he is, he is God and we are not. And he said the glory of the latter house will be greater yeah. than the former house. And I think that what Brother Thrill brought us into today is really one of the stumbling blocks. People get all hung up on tongues and they get hung up on this and that. And Jesus said, go in the upper room and you're gonna receive P-O-W-E-R. Amen. And honey, I love what Brother Cirillo said. You know, he said that the more that you yield, this is the secret. You see, everybody has all kinds of, you know, the Bible says, get rich quick schemes. You should flee those things. There is really no quick way to receive the spiritual riches and power of God. And so people make a lot of money selling books, coming up with slogans. But I love Brother Shula because he really brings us right down to where the rubber meets the road. He says, the more you yield, the more you dedicate, the more you give of your life, the more power 
Amen. You receive. Amen. And it's so freeing. The burden is just lifted off of our Amen. shoulders. It's not the work of the man, of a man. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And I love this scripture from uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It says, I has not seen or ear heard, mm. neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That's wow. God has prepared things for you, for me. What a remarkable verse that we can all get excited about. Amen. We can wake up in the morning and be thrilled to know that God has prepared remarkable things for us. You know, honey, I just feel a power. I feel the presence of God. I feel the hunger in the hearts of the people. And I want us to take our hands together and I want us to stretch our hands right now to every person that is listening on the podcast, every person that's watching on Facebook, every person that's connecting on YouTube. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, the only power that we have is the power to surrender. And so Lord, in this Legacy Pavilion Theater, Lord, under the mantle of your apostle, under the mantle of your prophet, under the mantle, God, of an incredible example of a life that was surrendered to you. Lord, we say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives. God, we surrender our minds. God, we surrender our time. God, we surrender our treasures. God, we surrender every talent, every gift. God, everything that we are, everything that we're not. Lord, we declare that we are yours. And God, as I agree with Jerry right now, Father, I declare that a powerful spiritual force is being released in your life that will bring about the greatest manifestation of the power of God that you have ever experienced. I declare your best is yet to come. I want to encourage you, stay connected. Your double portion is here. Our double portion is here. We want to do exactly what Elisha did to receive the double portion from Elijah. And that is he honored it. He picked it up. He used it. He stayed connected. Elijah said, if you see me, I want to thank you so many of you that are staying connected by the tens of thousands. And you literally are seeing the prophet of God, Morris Cirillo. What an incredible day that we live in. This is something that the early church didn't have, this incredible technology, this ability. And so God has given us, I believe, this technology for such a time as this. We love you so much from all of the nations. Keep your emails coming. Keep your comments uh, running on Facebook, on YouTube. We love to hear what God is doing in your life. Honey, tomorrow is going to be incredible. Day six, and then the final closing, day seven, will be the powerful Proof Producers anointing impartation service. You just need to stay connected, I need to, you need to, our best is yet to come. Amen, amen, and I love what Dr. Cirillo is talking about tomorrow, so you don't want to miss it. How to deal with Satan's uh, attacking you with unbelief. Wow. And so you're gonna wanna tune in and hear what Dr. Cirillo shares with us and shares with us how to get the victory. It's gonna be, it's gonna be incredible. You, you, I love what he says tomorrow. I won't, I won't even preempt it right now, but every person that God uses is going to encounter opposition. So tomorrow he gives us the secret yes. of how to deal with the negative forces of opposition, unbelief. Invite somebody to watch along with you tomorrow. Invite somebody to listen <clears throat> along with you tomorrow. On behalf of our beautiful first lady, Teresa, honey, she is so precious. She really is mother to millions. She has an amazing compassion, an amazing prayer burden for you and for your family know that behind the scenes, Teresa's praying for you. Yes, a woman of great wisdom. She is, she truly is. David Cirillo, our president, he has been so blessed by your words of encouragement, by your prayers, and David wants you to know 
how proud he is, how he is praying for you. He is seeing your testimonies, what God is doing in your life. Our team loves you so much. Our television department, it wouldn't be possible without them. So on behalf of our team and from our hearts to your hearts, just remember this, you are a part of God's end time plan. And God has not planned any defeats for you. Only victory. We'll see you tomorrow. Day six, Proof Producers, live from Legacy, in Jesus' name.